G'day, uh, Brenton here, VK2MEV, and what I'm doing today is just documenting a modification I plan on doing on my uh, Yaesu FT60R handheld here. So obviously I've, I've taken this apart, and I'll uh, show you how to put these back together, so hopefully you can work out how to take them apart um, from my assembly procedure. Um, but the trouble I was having with this radio is to do with the, the external microphone socket here. Um, I've been using this radio for APRS, and what I've found is unless I really push in um, the, the four pin plug, this is just a completely disconnected one, this cable just came from the camcorder I'm using, um, but unless you push this in very firmly, uh, the radio actually keys up without needing to. It's easy to demonstrate, just got the antenna on there, and if I plug that in all the way, you can see it actually goes all the way flush with the socket that's soldered onto the PCB. But if you pull it out a little bit, um, there it goes. You see, that's the low power TX, and you just hear my other radio uh, receiving that a little bit. So that's pulled out about a millimeter or so. You can see the TX light up there. Now, obviously as it is, um, that stays in there firmly, and there isn't a problem. The problem happens uh, because on the chassis, there's actually this, I uh, don't know how well you can see it, but there's a rubber grommet, a little rubber seal just on the uh, on the chassis there. You'll be able to see it, oh there you go, just on the outside there. Now what that does is it puts, um, it basically pushes the, the plug out a little bit um, and it pushes it out enough that you actually have to press, keep this thing pressed in so it actually um, uh, stays plugged in all the way and doesn't, and doesn't key up. Um, now obviously if you've got this thing floating around your backpack, uh, <laughs> I guess you could put a rubber band around a right angle plug like this to hold it in, but I found that a little bit unsatisfactory. Um, so basically all I plan on doing is just removing uh, that little that little o-ring there. The, uh, the waterproofing will suffer a little bit, um, but I'm never going to use this thing in the rain anyway. Um, and Yezu don't claim it's a waterproof uh, transceiver, so um, <laughs> I'm not going to be too worried. No doubt it will void the warranty, but um, I'd rather have APRS working reliably. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm going to do. Just going to remove that little little grommet there to make APRS work, or make the speaker mic work. And I've had a friend of mine who I believe has the official uh, Yezu adapter, and he said that that was too a little bit finicky, because this socket on the PCB is really designed to uh, to not have any gap there pushing the uh, the plug out. Um, so I'll just go through and I'll assemble it so that uh, you can see how you can disassemble this radio. Uh, it's not too difficult, you just need to know what to do. Firstly you can't do it with the antenna on so we'll take that off. Um, this whole thing just slips into the, um, uh, the front carrier there somehow. Okay, there we go. That just slips in. So if you're disassembling this, you just pull apart at the bottom of the chassis here, and the whole thing will uh, uh, will slip out. There you go. You just got to be careful. There is an O-ring seal around this whole thing, so um, just got to make sure that all lines up um, neatly. So we'll just throw that back in there. Okay, so that's in. Um, the next thing is on the on the dials, well sorry, on the volume and the squelch knob, um, there are these, ooh, these little screws. Um, now these just have uh, notches on either side of them, so in order to assemble these, uh, I just used a pair of tweezers, which I've now lost. Okay, so I found a pair of tweezers that I was using to uh, to unscrew these little lock nuts that go on the bottom of the squelch knob. Uh, so you just sit that over there. And I'll just use the tweezers either side of it um, to screw it in. It's quite a uh, tedious process this. No doubt there's a, uh, a more suitable tool uh, to do this with, but I don't happen to have it. so. Um,
Okay, that one's in family. There's another one on the squelch knob there. Okay, so those screws are on. Now, on top of these, there were a couple of um, these little, uh, I don't know what you'd call these washers or whatever. Um, well, not quite washers. They just slip in the, uh, slip around the gap there. <coughs> Um, it looks when you first take these apart, it looks like these are part of the uh, part of the radio, but they just come out with a pair of tweezers there, so they're fairly easy to get out. And the same deal on the other knob. Let's push that down there. <clears throat> okay, so now the um, the dial squelch uh, button has this little attachment there. Um, now I think that should go the other way around. So that's just the uh, the squelch knob there. Um, obviously it'll work if you have it backwards, but this little uh, notch here is going to be in a different spot. Um, then these little knobs here that they just push on, push off. Um, so that's that one there. Uh, the volume knob just goes on. So there's two little highlights in the top left there. Um, that's part of the, uh, uh, they go on the chamfered edge of the volume knob. And again, just pushes off. I did have trouble getting the volume knob off, um, so I did use a uh, flathead screwdriver just to lever that off. Um, now the screws. The screws are a little bit tricky. You actually need a size 0, 0 a size 0, and a size 1 Phillips in order to do these screws. Firstly there's a couple of these little silver ones uh, which go on the bottom edge here. They are um, the size 0. So I've got my size 0 Phillips there. Those ones are a size 0 um, and the ones up the top here are really small uh, black ones. They are a size zero zero. I don't know why Yezu did that. I guess it just gives us a hard time. But uh, if you don't have the right size screwdrivers, it is very easy to damage Phillips head screws without the right size driver. But um, so yeah, just be aware. There is zero zero. There is zero. And then the size one is used on the slightly bigger uh, Phillips head screws that go on the uh, the belt clip. There. So. Hopefully that's enough to show you how to disassemble this rig if you wanted to. Um, and so I'm just going to get in there with, with a knife or whatever and take out that uh, little rubber seal there so that the external mic speaker mic socket fits nicely. Oh, well, hopefully this has been helpful.